Hello, hello, it's Let Snow, and I'm very surprised that my last video regarding all of my frogs did so well, so I've decided to do a few more frog related videos. It may not be makeup related, but it's weird and wacky, and that kind of goes with this channel anyway, so this video is going to be about planting up the new terrarium that I've built for my new group of hourglass frogs. This terrarium is a 12 by 12 by 18 exoterra, and the background of this is formed out of expanding foam, silicone, and coconut fibre, as well as some pots and some cork. Don't worry, I do have a video coming on how I've done that as well in a large terrarium. It was just a little bit harder to film on this smaller style terrarium. Then there's a layer of this weed suppressant membrane mesh stuff, and that just helps to stop the substrate from touching the drainage layer. There's also a little pipe that I've siliconed into the bottom there. That will act as a little siphon area for me to suck out any water that can collect down in those drainage pebbles. I start out by placing my substrate, making sure to keep that membrane flattened and up at the sides. So I start by going around the edges, pushing it into the corners and just making sure that everything is flat. Then I like to place one plant, and this is a plant that I'm sure that I'm going to be using in the build. So this is a fern that I'm placing in the corner, and I know that I definitely want to place this plant first, and that's going to be my starting point. I like to just place one in there so I can see where I'm going to go with the other ones, and then I can get an idea of the feel of what I want to create. Now being as frog skin is extremely porous, that results in them being extremely susceptible to pesticides and fertilizers. Now this plant is bought from a garden center, and I would advise you to grow these plants for a little bit of time before you put them in a terrarium. Of course, if you're building a terrarium and not housing frogs in it straight away, there's no problem in just planting it up and leaving it to sit there. But a few weeks of growing in your own conditions without any pesticides or fertilizers, making sure that when you water, you get the leaves really wet so it rinses them off, and removing most of the soil before you plant the plant into the terrarium will minimize the risks of anything detrimental happening to the inhabitants. The next thing I like to do is place the water bowl, and this is something that I've learned to do at the start of a build, because usually I'll go ahead and plant things, and then I'll get to the point where I'm trying to put a water bowl in, and I've planted it up a little bit too much, and there's not enough space. And that's also gonna act as a way that I can put things in it that fall out, or if I've got any areas that I want to remove debris from, I can place it into this, and it'll keep everything clean and tidy. Now it looks drastic that I have a drill here, but the thing I'm going and doing now is I'm adding some drainage holes into the areas that I've got into the background. Now being as a background is made out of silicon expanding foam and coconut fibre, there's actually no real drainage there, so those pots in there will just end up filling up with water and becoming stagnant over time. So I like to go in with a drill and add some drainage holes into the areas where I believe the water is going to collect. Now this isn't going to be 100% perfect, but it's just going to help into getting that some of the water out of those areas and start stopping the plants from stagnating. Next I like to look at the plants that I have to hand, and I place them into the terrarium, moving them around in different areas, thinking where they would look best, and also where they would grow best, because it doesn't matter if they're going to look good there and they will just die within a few weeks, it has to be creatively pleasing and suitable for the growth of the plant. I also have a slight idea in the direction that I'm going to be taking the terrarium before I get to this stage. So you notice that I have these places in the background where the pots are already placed. So these are kind of like the ideas that I've had beforehand and it all comes down to creative experience and just getting an idea for something and making sure that you like the way it looks but it's also a bit of a learning curve because if something doesn't grow you just try again in a different position. I may place these pots and holes in the background to start with, but sometimes I do change my mind. That's why I just start to place these plants into the tank and then I can see if I like the idea or if I'm going to change it and add something else to that area. I decided to use the same fern up in this corner as I did down in the bottom one because it kind of comes down to that old theory of when it comes to taking photographs of having like the thirds kind of thing. There's all these kind of aspects when it comes to planting up aquascapes and terrariums and that kind of plays into what's going to look good in the pattern kind of thing because the human brain kind of perceives something to look beautiful when it's in a certain shape. It's very hard to explain and you can go and research some of this by looking at other aquascapes and people talking about this. They know a hell of a lot more about it than I do. I just basically create what I think looks good. All of the plants that I've planted so far into this terrarium have all been ferns. That one there is actually a dragon scale fern and it's one of my favourites, being as the name and the way it looks as well. But you'll notice from that point that everything is pretty much just green, so I went in and added one of these little dizzy orchids just to add a little bit more colour and texture. 
almost off the shot there in the corner of the tank I've added in another little fern and this is a creeping fern and I want it to start growing up so some plants you have to kind of like tame into doing what you want them to do now for some plants like this fern and some vines you can actually use some super glue to apply it into certain little areas a very small amount and then pushing the vine into it so it sticks and will start to grow in the direction that you want it super glue is completely fine when it's cured so there's not going to be any problems with the frogs or you can use these little clips that's what I used in this instance just make sure that they are securely placed into the background so there's not going to be any risks of them falling out and causing injury. These are only going to be in there for a short period of time, allowing the plant to attach, then they will be removed anyway. You may have noticed I've been working over on the other side now and I've filled up two of those plant pots and I'm planting a species of Margravia which is a tropical vine and I actually decided to fill up both of those pots with this one just so I could allow it a little bit more growth and I actually went in with a little bit of moss, completely filled up one of those plant pots and just draped the vine over the top of it. These little green blobs that I'm applying here are actually balls of moss, and this is phoenix moss, java moss, and rekia. Now these are aquatic mosses and aquatic plants that will grow terrestrially if you give them time and moist conditions. I basically just place these in there to kind of seed the tank, because these will just start to grow over a period of time. They will take a long time to adapt, but they will eventually start to grow in, and you'll get some different textures growing in between those plants that you've already placed. Now all the plants are in place, it's a case of watering and giving them a good heavy misting. Most of the watering of these plants will be done by this misting, and I will mist it once or twice a day. Then once the plants are established, I'll adjust my watering as necessary, just to make sure that they're getting everything that they require. And that's this terrarium fully planted and complete. The only thing left to do is add the frogs. Now these are hourglass frogs and you'll notice on their back the reason why they're called hourglass frogs is because they basically have an hourglass pattern and inside that pattern some of them have different levels of gold spots so they're called hourglass frogs and that's basically the reason as to why. I have a group of six of these that I'm going to be adding to this terrarium and I'm hoping that I do have a mixed group because I'd love to start breeding these frogs. These are almost fully grown they only stay around three to four centimeters the females being larger than the males so hopefully we get some luck and we end up with some eggs and some tadpoles. If you would like a list of the plants I do know them all so if you want them I will list them down in the description below just let me know in the comments. I have filmed some other videos regarding frog related things so if you would like them also let me know down in the comments below. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and until next time bye bye.